Sebastian Mel Martinez, MMA Nets, here with Andrei Arlovsky, who faces off with Shamil Abdurakimov here in UFC Russia. So this is a pretty big event, obviously. I mean, Russia is one of the biggest countries in the world, and now UFC is finally coming here. You know, they did China, now they're doing Russia. How do you feel about being part about sort of, you know, what is basically MMA history? Uh, no doubt. I'm very excited to be part of the big event, first event uh, UFC in Russia. UFC is uh, the biggest and the, the best uh, organization, MMA organization in the world. I'm very happy to be part of this, and uh, no doubt, I'm very excited. And we saw a, maybe a little bit confusion ahead of hand. It's, it seemed like uh, on country for you, they put Russia instead of Belarus, or maybe that was just a mistake. Is that something you see? I have no idea. Russian, even Russian SME put me that I'm some enemy, you know, so just I don't want to talk about. I'm an employee of UFC, so sport's supposed to unite people, right? Yeah. So. I'm well, do you not care so much about the nationality stuff and all? Absolutely not. First of all, I'm an employee of UFC. Yeah. So you're facing Shamil Abdurakimov, uh, uh, whose name is a little hard to pronounce, uh, a guy who maybe some fans might not be so familiar with because, you know, you've been in the cage so much longer than he has. He's only had a couple fights in the UFC. What do you feel about his performances so far? Uh, he's a little bit younger than me. He has great uh, wrestling. He has re great wrestling skills, striking skills. No doubt he's very dangerous and uh, it's going to be a no, um, tough fight for me. So do you see his wrestling being his strongest and most dangerous weapon? Come on, he's from Dagestan, and Dagestan everybody can wrestle, you know, and uh, I was a couple of uh, times, I had a couple cam wrestling camps in uh, Dagestan, no doubt, they, 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 it's great wrestling school, they, no doubt. And what do you feel is your biggest strength, and without perhaps even striking? I don't know, we'll see, but I still practice at some grappling and uh, freestyle, so we'll see. So uh, you're coming off of a very close loss against Taitu Ivasa. Uh, I think some some might have scored it for you, but you know, really close fight. Have you had a chance to look back at it and sort of look at, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that? No, I, of course I looked, uh, watched that fight and uh, first round when I tried to throw him and cover myself, that fucking dick uh, referee like keep us on the ground more than one minute. So I think it's stupid. For example, if it would be a John McCartney referee, if it's no actions, he's gonna like probably get up, like let us get up like in 20, 30 seconds. Stop. This fucking guy kept one minute us on the ground, so it cost me, I guess, some uh, some points, and that's why I lost the fight. And do you feel like you know? It's so easy for a fighter like you, your income, your legacy, everything can be so affected by bad referee calls. Do you feel like referees should be much more accountable for some of the calls they make? Uh, they have to be just professional. I can name you some guys who like really professional, I respect them. Because even I lost sometimes a fight, but they, it was a fucking right call. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, like I said, you, you fought to Ivasa. Now, you're, you know, you got his teammate over there. Who do you... How, who are you rooting for in the main event? Uh, listen, no doubt. Alexei is my uh, friend, he's my teammate. Uh, we have same management team. Uh, but I still have a, a lot of respect for Mark Hunt. He's a legend and K1 and MMA, so it's, it's going to be a tough fight. And of course, I'm going to be rooting for Alexei. And so you've been in this game for such a long time now, and I think a lot of people expected you, and you know, you had a bit of a tough run for a while, and a lot of people maybe expected you to give up and retire, but you came back, and you came back strong with a couple wins. What did you change? <laughs> My first jiu-jitsu coach, uh, Dina Castells, once told me, discipline is remembering what you want. Every fucking morning when I'm in camera, when I woke up, I remember what I want, why I fucking start all the shit, like, oh, I don't know, you know. And before my flight to uh, Moscow, I read uh, uh, something about Mike Tyson, and he said, uh, "When like fighter get up, uh, knock down, and get up, it's 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 not the physics, it's fucking character." So I have a strong character, I believe. So it's just like was motivate me and push me, like train over and over and fight over and over. So plus I'm happy guy, you know. My wife let me do what I love to do, so I'm good. Well, that's good. I have great management team, great coaches, you know, great team, like, besides uh, my management team and coaches, so it's like a, a, lot, of, a lot of people helps me to, to get better and better every day. There's some interesting stuff happening in your division. Uh, Brock Lesnar going to get the next title shot in heavyweight. A lot of people have been critical of that, so, you know, saying it's just money and not necessarily sports. How do you feel about it? No comments.
<laughs> okay, well that might say a bit as well. Uh, in other news, uh, Fabrizio Verdum recently caught uh, for banned substances, uh, banned now for two years. Uh, USADA seems to have you know, come on pretty strong. How do you feel about the developments in terms of like PEDs and things like that? And He's a fucking cheater, that's it. <laughs> and do you think two years is the right amount of suspension? Do you think it should be lighter, harder? Ah, it's, it's, it's not my business, listen, I just... It's up to totally it's up to UFC and USADA. So, yeah. if they uh, listen, if UFC hire USADA to, to do all this stuff, it's not just like for fun, you know. They wanna like lean sport and they wanna like fair fight. So, I guess uh, USADA doing their job. Yeah. All right. Well, to round off, then, like I said, you're one of the veterans of the sport. I have friends who don't follow UFC, but they saw they saw the pit bull, the guy with that with a mouth guard, like many many years ago, and they still remember you. What, and there's many fighters who fall off a map and you know fade into obscurity. Why do you think fans have been so stuck to you since the beginning? Uh, because I'm all, all the time loyal to my fans. I never say you know to take a picture or sign something. And I'm nice to media except like few of them. And uh, then just I'm just loyal guy, you know. Like being obviously media who can like make you like looks good or makes you horrible so that's why you have to be nice even you're like in a bad mood you have to be nice what about my fans just i don't know i respect my fans and uh, they pay me back uh it, 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 it was a nice um, example when back in 2013 i wanted back to ufc you know and uh, when uh, when uh, dana dana white tweeted or put some message on instagram i have screenshot oh andrea lovsky welcome back to ufc and uh, I received many, um, I don't know, like how many thousand like text messages, uh, uh, messages on my Instagram, my Twitter. Oh, we're happy for you. That means that everything what I did for past, fuck, it's scary to say, 18 years, you know, it's paid me back. So, yeah. well, great. it's paid its dues, and we're happy to see you back in the cage. And fans at home, be sure to keep a lookout on the fight between Andrei Arlovsky and Shamil Abdurakimov. Thank you very much. Good luck in the fight. Thank you.